All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, one o'clock here uh, on a wonderful afternoon as the fog is uh, finally dissipating across the area. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us here for something that uh, is fairly new for us. We've never uh, done a winter weather awareness talk like this uh, before in our past, uh, but we wanted to use this opportunity to uh, reconnect with everyone out there this afternoon to talk a little bit about uh, winter weather uh, and uh, some ways to stay, stay safe. Uh, during the winter weather season that's uh, a little bit slow to begin here uh, this fall and, and early portions of the winter. Again, as we go through the talk here today, uh, feel free. Uh, if you come up with any questions, throw them into to the uh, GoToWebinar interface and we'll be uh, happy to, to answer some of those questions you may have later uh, after the talk is done. But for now, we wanted to uh, kind of get started with uh, a little bit about what we're going to talk about today, just a very brief outline. Uh, again, this is something new for us today. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about, about us, about the Weather Service, um, and about why we're doing this and why winter weather safety is, is so important uh, going through the, uh, the upcoming months ahead. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, the historical winter perspectives and, and some ways that we should be able to stay aware of uh, incoming winter weather and, and be prepared for what's, uh, what's ahead of us. Uh, we're going to take a look, and, and a large part of the focus of this talk is going to be on staying safe. Um, and that's some of the big components, being aware ahead of winter storms, um, staying safe when a winter storm strikes the area, uh, and then some things that you should be thinking about uh, before and even after um, winter weather threatens the region. We're going to wrap up with uh, some talk about how to measure uh, measure snow and measure uh, an ice and some of the proper ways to do this, and then some of the ways that you can report that information uh, to us that's, that's really valuable um, for, our, uh, for our needs here in the Weather Service and uh, even the members of, of our partners in the, in the media. And finally, we're going to wrap up uh, and uh, I'll have some examples to show you, some more resources on our website that we can go over that can kind of help guide you through the upcoming winter season. So first, uh, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a, my name, first of all, is Matthew Dukes. I'm a lead meteorologist uh, in the Sioux Falls forecast office. Uh, I've been here since 2014. Uh, originally came up from the Kansas City area. So uh, I moved back up uh, north to get a little bit uh, more taste of winter weather. Uh, and that certainly worked out for us over the last uh, six years or so. Um, I am born and raised in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, so I'm very familiar with the uh, cold snow and, and all of those things that go with it. Uh, my uh, my main focal points here at the Weather Service Office are dealing with communications and also uh, helping guide our social media platforms. So a uh, little shameless plug here, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and uh, find uh, the National Weather Service in Sioux Falls on both Twitter and Facebook. Uh, we share a lot of very uh, unique and useful information ahead of both winter weather and in days like today where it's fairly quiet, uh, information that you might find uh, very interesting. Another thing that uh, I'll have this plug uh, a little bit later in the talk today, but we do have a website, uh, www.weather.gov slash uh, uh, Sioux Falls. And at the top of that website, we do have a, a page that details uh, some more winter weather awareness uh, information. So Winter Awareness 2020 is the page name. And on this page, you're going to find uh, some more information about this talk, but also some handouts. Uh, we'll go over here at the very end of the presentation that will really help you. Um, through the winter season. So a little bit about uh, my office here, uh, the office that I work in here in Sioux Falls. We serve uh, uh, 45 counties across Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, and South Dakota. Uh, we are one of 122 offices uh, that the National Weather Service uh, does have across the, the country. Uh, we are a dedicated team of about 25 individuals, uh, and that's a combination of meteorologists and administrative staff and, and technical uh, support staff. Uh, if you didn't already know it, we are here 24-7, uh, 365 days. Uh, so no matter what happens across the region, someone is here at the National Weather Service uh, watching and, and uh, making a forecast uh, for the area. And that brings me a little bit to uh, some of the things that we do. Uh, if you're new to the Weather Service and not quite familiar about what we do, we do provide public weather forecasts and uh, issue warnings for much of the region uh, in the tri-state area. Uh, we do provide special forecasts for hydrology, uh, so for the rivers, uh, for fire weather, 
uh, for the aviation services, the airports and uh, uh, balloonists across the area, and also many other sectors uh, that we provide support for. We also provide a lot of direct support to uh, our partners uh, in law enforcement, emergency management, uh, and other uh, local and state uh, groups. Uh, when, uh, when their events are, are needed for weather support or weather, uh, or if weather threatens uh, the area ahead of their events. So moving forward, the big question that may uh, be out there is, well, why is winter safety so important? Well, take a look at the news uh, today. Uh, what's happening in the northeastern par portions of the United States? Well, that's a, a major northeaster move through the area and is affecting uh, millions of people, uh, bringing over uh, 40 inches of snow to portions of, of the New York area. Uh, and all of this winter weather, uh, even though we have a, a fairly good amount of time that we can get ahead of storms and predict when they're coming, it has a substantial impact to, uh, to society and to the impacts uh, for everyday life. Uh, just a few statistics I wanted to throw, throw at you here this afternoon. About 70% of the U.S. population actually lives in an area that can see snow and that, that routinely sees snow. 24% uh, of weather-related crashes are often uh, taking place on roads that are impacted by winter weather or winter weather precipitation. Uh, one of the things uh, out there, the cost. State and local governments often spend uh, an estimated $2.3 billion each year on, on just winter weather operations, just clearing roads and treating roads. Uh, and lastly, unfortunately, uh, more than uh, 1,300 people have been killed um, on average due to winter weather. And, and it's estimated that um, over 100,000 people are injured in wintry conditions each winter, each winter. So winter weather has a profound impact on, on society, uh, whether it's from the roads that we travel on, whether it's our jobs, our schools, uh, or the aviation things that we uh, uh, partake in. So part of being safe and part of being prepared for the season ahead is kind of getting an understanding of what's ahead and what we can typically see in this part of the country. Well, many of us already know we've had an early start to the winter with uh, some fairly uh, good snow accumulations in the first part of November. Uh, and well, since then snow has shut off across the area. But on average, we do, uh, we do average about 35 to 45 inches of snow. So most of us have seen snow in anywhere from seven to 10 inches. Uh, and uh, despite this somewhat uh, of a dry stretch of weather over the past month, uh, we're just a little bit below normal for the seasonal snowfall totals. Uh, the one thing to note though, is that uh, you know we do average 35 to 45 inches of snow every year. So uh, we'll likely see more snowfall ahead. And I bring this point up is because we have had a fairly dry and a fairly quiet last uh, month or so across the area. Wanted to throw this little bit of information out there for you and look at the frequency uh, of when we can actually see or when we typically see an inch or more of snow. And that being said, you know, through October, November, and early portions of December, we don't have a very high frequency at times. It's actually not that uncommon uh, to have a fairly dry or at least a low snowfall start to the season ahead. But you can see a couple things, and, and this is why we do these kind of talks and we continue to prepare. The fact is, is our snow season lasts a much longer time in this part of the country. Uh, as, uh, as temperatures begin to warm towards the spring, our pattern often becomes a little bit more active, and we often see some of the highest frequencies of, of snow, and, and especially heavy snows, uh, take place in February, March, and, and even into April. Uh, we've had snow as late as uh, May and even June in, in portions of the upper Midwest. So all, all that being said, this means it can be a very long winter. If you've lived here long enough, you definitely know uh, that is true. So what is winter cold like? We talked about the snow, talked about the precipitation. Well, the map you're seeing here on the screen highlights uh, the average number of days each winter with just one hour of a wind chill colder than 20 below zero. So you can see 15 to 28 days on average, each winter season, cold season, uh, have at least one or two hours uh, below 20 below. Um, and you talk about overall cold, you know, we average in this part of the country nearly 60 days of the winter with a high temperature below 32 degrees. So snow and cold is something we definitely live with in this part of the area. 
But what falls from the sky in the winter? Well, and, how, and, and I guess, well, how do we determine that? Well, it's pretty simple. We look at a few things. The most important one is temperature. Uh, temperature is the number one variable when it comes to uh, what uh, type of precipitation falls uh, during a winter storm. Uh, and it's often the variable that brings the most uncertainty when we talk about uh, forecasting ahead of some, some very complex winter storms. So you can see in this little chart, we're, symbol we're representing warmer air above freezing by this little area of, of orange shaded color. Um, and in the case of rain, when we're looking above up into the atmosphere, there's enough of that warm air to make the precipitation that falls turn into rain. But where it gets a little bit messy is where that warm air is just, it's there, but it's not thick enough to completely turn our, our wintry precipitation over to rain. In the case of a little bit uh, more cold air at the ground and a little bit warm air above the ground, we end up in a lot of times with freezing rain. Um, if there's a little bit more colder air than warmer air, we end up with sleet, very fine, hard pellets of, of, of ice. And finally, when we don't have any warm air above, it's pretty self-explanatory. If we don't have any warm air to melt the snow that's falling, it's going to just fall as snow. So how do we do that? We study things called atmospheric soundings. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this, but this is just an example of, of a case that would produce freezing rain across the area. We're always looking for the temperatures, how much area in the atmosphere is below freezing and how much area of the, the atmosphere is above freezing. Uh, and it's this area that really determines the precipitation that can fall. But when we just get down to snow, we have to remember that not all snow is, is the same. Um, and again, this is a variable that is very dependent on the temperatures. Uh, we'll frequently talk about this and you may hear about this on, on uh, your local TV. Uh, when we're talking about storms and preparing ahead of storms. Uh, the temperature also determines just how uh, light and fluffy your snow is or just how wet and heavy your snow is. And this is something called the snow liquid ratio. Um, and this means that for every inch of liquid precipitation that would fall, if we melted it all down, this is how much snow that you would actually accumulate. Now in this portion of the, the country, our typical snow liquid ratio is about 13 to one. And this is a pretty average, not too wet, not too dry snow. So it's a fairly typical snow. And this means that if we were to have an inch of precipitation fall, we would have about 13 inches of snow out of that. So it's another one of those factors that we, when we talk about uh, preparing ahead of time um, and understanding what exactly is going to fall in the storm ahead. Lastly, you know, unable to be prepared for the winter ahead, you kind of have to know, well, how bad can the winter be? We've talked about snow amounts, we've talked about cold. Let's talk about the frequency of, of some of these watches and warnings and, uh, and, and some of these winter weather hazards that you may hear about every day. Well, in a typical winter season, like we've, uh, we've studied the numbers and crunched that on average, we deal with about six winter storm watches in the area each winter season. Blizzard warnings, the most extreme winter weather warning that we can we can issue for the area. On average, we run about three per year. Um, winter storm warnings, about six per year. Winter weather advisories are, are products typically meant to, uh, to advertise more nuisance winter weather events. They'll have a, a, an impact on our lives, but not the most severe impact. Um, so we do typically have more winter weather advisories in this portion of the country. Finally, ice storm warnings, uh, we do get about one ice storm warning on average each winter weather season. Now, when it comes to cold weather, we do get some very cold snaps. Almost every winter season, we'll have at least one or maybe two severe cold snaps, the ones that uh, featuring wind chills colder than 35 below zero, um, the kind of cold snaps that uh, uh, can cause frostbite or even, or even injury within 10 minutes or less. But these are fairly rare. They can happen, but they're rare. More typically, though, we do get wind chill advisories. And these are also very significant events. Um, they're just a little bit warmer. Wind chill isn't quite as cold, um, but you can certainly have injury uh, and damage to your health if you uh, are exposed to these temperatures uh, for any longer period of time. So we've talked a little bit about how to be aware of what typically happens in this part of the country, in this local area. 
Uh, let's spend the next few minutes talking about how we can be prepared. Because being prepared before, before a storm arrives, knowing what to do when a storm arrives, and, and then knowing how to recover from a storm uh, is really very critical to staying safe over the seasons ahead. So one of the best ways, and if you haven't already visited our webpage, um, I'd really recommend you to, to do so. There's a lot of very valuable information on there. Uh, you can go ahead and visit www.weather.gov slash Sioux Falls, and this will take you to our local webpage here for the Sioux Falls Forecast Office. You can check the weather at any part of the country um, by just going to www.weather.gov, and you can look at any, any of the weather conditions happening in any part of the, uh, the United States. So on this page, I wanted to bring you to attention just a few things to really help raise your awareness. Uh, number one, this little, little thing on the left-hand side of our, our webpage uh, goes over just the current conditions. Really simple, if you want to know what's happening right now, there you can find it. Number two is where uh, two and three are really kind of a combination. Um, they're where you can see the, the current watches, warnings, and advisories that are in effect for the area. They're also a location where you can click on a map and get down to your local forecast. So if you're ahead of a winter storm or you hear about a winter storm coming, it's a location where you can go in and see just uh, what our forecast is for your location. Uh, the top news of the day here, uh, number four at the top, this is located, this is a location where we'll awful, often put uh, winter weather information. We'll put uh, uh, news headlines talking about the winter storm ahead. We'll talk, put information about uh, uh, winter weather safety, and we'll also put information up there after the storm happens so you can get an idea as far as where the heaviest snowfall uh, took place, where the high, highest ice, ice amounts took place, and so on and so forth. Number five and number six here at the bottom are very important as well. Number five is a weather story we actually produce every day here in the Weather Service, at least twice a day. That kind of gives you a visual overview, a very simple overview of what to expect. In many cases, if you're looking for a simple graphic to look at to summarize your weather, um, this is the place to look. Finally, number six here is the radar. Um, this is uh, where you can get to, to access the radar for the area. Um, today is actually a very big day for the area and this week as we switch over to a new radar display. Uh, so I really encourage you to uh, go visit the page, check it out, become familiar with it, uh, and know where all of these information pieces are. As we kind of dig forward on this page, one thing uh, uh, that if you're a little bit more advanced user, you want to uh, begin to dig more into your forecast and, and know more about the specifics for your area, we did create a winter weather resources page. Now this is always linked at the top of our web page uh, under that news headline section. And if you go visit this page, you can uh, see things like your current, for current snowfall forecast, your current ice forecast. Uh, it also has some links to information to show uh, some of the forecasts for each individual cities uh, over on an hour by hour basis. And it gives you a couple things that uh, we'll talk about for the even more advanced users here, uh, something called probabilistic snowfall. Now what probabilistic snowfall is, is kind of like a, think about a super model, a super weather model. We're taking all of the forecast data from 60 or so weather models and putting them together and then taking what they say and creating graphics and creating guidance to help uh, really assess the amount of snow and the potential for snow in your area. Uh, this page, if you head over there, you'll be able to see uh, high-end and low-end snowfall amounts, where the average or typical forecast is going to be. You'll get to see probabilities, if you're familiar with probabilities, you know, like, for example, a 50% chance of, of two inches of snow. Uh, so you'll be able to go there routinely and check to see, well, is my risk of two inches of snow increasing um, or is it fairly low? And finally, take a, make sure to, to keep an eye out because we are sharing a lot of this information now uh, through our social media feeds. And we're trying to experiment this season since it's a fairly new way of presenting forecast information. Uh, we're experimenting with how to communicate that to you all. Uh, the one thing we'd really, uh, really like to do that if you see some of this information on our social media feeds, uh, feel free to let us know what you think about it. Feel free to, to provide any uh, tips or suggestions you have to help us improve it in the future. One final thing, um, we often talk about uh, what a storm will produce in the form of snowfall amounts or ice amounts or strong winds, but we 
never really had a tool to really express just how severe the storm has the potential to be. Well, we do have a new product here uh, for the weather service called the Winter Storm Severity Index. Uh, this is created uh, using a combination of our forecast data, climatology, what typically happens uh, during a winter in an area, um, and it also uses some of our local resources to kind of convey the impact from a storm. So we're kind of breaking away a little bit from just how much snow am I going to get to uh, maybe how severe is this storm going to be? Is it going to be a typical winter storm where I don't have a lot of impact? Maybe I'm a little bit, uh, uh, maybe travel's a little bit impacted. Maybe uh, I have to be a little bit more careful when I venture out um, to the extreme, to the historic storms where uh, his history has told us that uh, things will be very difficult. And again, this winter weather uh, severity index is uh, is a link on our winter weather resources page. Don't worry about remembering all of this information. We do have a nice uh, handout we'll talk about a little bit at, at the end of the talk uh, that will point you to where to find it. The one thing to note here, it is a little bit more sophisticated than just a snowfall forecast. Uh, again, it's meant to put everything into context, blowing snow, blizzard potential, ice accumulation, and really kind of help provide some of that uh, um, context to, to the weather forecast you may see out there. So as we move kind of the things to stay aware to stay aware of and the resources available to make sure that you can uh, know what's ahead and what's coming your way, let's talk a little bit about some of the, the words that you may hear. Uh, and this means, this is what we're talking about, like how to stay ahead of ahead of the forecast. A hazardous weather outlook is something that you may visit our website and you may see uh, highlighted on our website. And this is a generic source of information that you can kind of get ahead of uh, keeping track of what's coming into the area. Uh, it's a text product that will generalize the forecast in the next seven days and present a, a highlight where hazardous weather, whether it be snowfall, fog, or um, icing, or even in the summer times when we're looking for thunderstorms or severe weather. It's a good first look at what we could see in the future. But watch advisory and warnings are terms you're gonna frequently hear uh, moving through the winter season ahead. When you see a winter storm watch issue or hear that we're under a watch, what we'd really like you to remember is this is the time to be ready. Be prepared and uh, think about that the potential for a winter storm or winter weather uh, that could be significant to cause uh, uh, major impacts uh, is in the cards for the area. Uh, it's the time to prepare. It's time to uh, enact your severe weather, your winter weather safety plans. Uh, an advisory, when you hear the term winter weather advisory uh, or freezing rain advisory, uh, this is one we typically refer to, to using caution. Um, you can have some significant uh, impacts with the advisory conditions, but typically um, we see generally minor disruptions uh, to, you, to your everyday life. And the last and the most severe is the warning. Uh, when you hear warning, whether it's a winter storm warning, a blizzard warning, uh, or an ice storm warning, uh, these are the ones uh, that are that are significant. Um, it's a uh, when a winter storm warning is issued, it's uh, we want you to be aware of that a, a significant winter storm that could put, could cause major disruptions to your everyday life um, is headed for the area. When one's issued, we want you to take action, just like you would during severe weather season. We want you to enact your safety plans, and we want you to uh, begin thinking about all the steps we're going to talk about in, a, in just a few minutes. We'll go a little bit over what each uh, headline is in our area. Um, more of this information is linked on our website and into the winter resources you'll see a little bit later. But just know winter storm warning, typically they're issued uh, for our forecast area when we're expecting uh, six or more inches of snow in 12 hours. Um, or eight inches of snow over the uh, the next 24 hours. But they can also be uh, issued for any combination of, of significant winter hazards uh, affecting the area that could cause life-threatening conditions. Uh, blizzard warning is uh, another step higher. Uh, when we have blizzard warnings, you don't have to have big amounts of snow and you don't have to have a, a high snow, snow accumulation. It's a factor of wind and it's a factor of visibility. Uh, so when we're looking at a blizzard warning, we're looking at 35 mile per hour winds or greater, uh, sustained or frequent gusts of those winds. Uh, and we're also looking at when, when our visibilities drop uh, below a quarter mile in most areas. Uh, now, this isn't just brief occurrences of happening. We like to have some continuity. So we like to have these kind of conditions happen 
uh, for a few hours across the area. Ice storm warnings, because again, they're fairly rare in this part of the, part of the, uh, of the area, but they do happen. Um, and when this takes place, we typically see ice accumulations uh, over a quarter of an inch in the area. Uh, winter weather advisories, again, this is, uh, as we just talked about, these are for the conditions um, where you're typically seeing more nuisance winter weather events, lighter snow amounts spread over longer durations of time. Uh, maybe it's a combination of snow, rain, freezing rain, anything, uh, any type of event that uh, can cause uh, some, in, uh, some uh, minor impacts across the area and in inconveniences to your everyday life. Uh, wind chill warnings and wind chill advisories. Uh, basically, all that is a separation of, of just how severe uh, the wind chill will be. A wind chill warning at minus 35 uh, degrees uh, typically means you'll have impacts if uh, exposed skin is left outside or if you're outside, exposed skin is there uh, within uh, 10 minutes or less. Wind chill warnings, you have a little bit more, little bit more time, but it's still things uh, to take uh, very seriously. Last thing, uh, you may have heard about this over uh, the winter season last year. Uh, we have started to, to issue snow squall, snow squall warnings. These are fairly short-lived products. They're what we call short-fused, meaning uh, we'll issue these warnings over very small geographic areas, much like your uh, severe thunderstorm warning or a tornado warning. They're very localized and they're very brief in duration. Uh, and why they're this way? Well, they're basically to meant to highlight uh, intense but uh, fairly limited uh, bursts or short durations of, of extreme winter weather conditions that'll cause um, extreme drops in visibility and, and uh, maybe even some high snowfall rates uh, over a short period of time. But one thing to note about these is that they will uh, uh, tone alert on your uh, weather radios and they will also uh, tone alert on your phone for the emergency alert system uh, or, or the uh, uh, the WEA system. So emergency alerts on your phone, if you have them uh, activated, they will uh, also appear to give you that kind of alert uh, warning that uh, a very severe winter situation, albeit short-lived, um, is in your location. Lastly, one of the ways uh, we wanted to talk about of staying prepared and staying aware ahead of winter storms is something that we can typically, unfortunately, see quite a bit. Um, we want you to be very careful with the sources of your information. We want you to be careful about sharing information. Um, watch out for the uh, social media feeds. Uh, nowadays are becoming very filled with uh, snowfall maps of seven or 10 days that show extreme snowfall amounts and uh, typically have a very low occurrence of actually happening. Uh, be careful about uh, uh, internet buzz. Be careful about rumors. Uh, watch for outdated graphics. When you see something pop up on social media, uh, watch out, check the date and time when it was issued. Uh, and uh, again, verify your source. Make sure you know it's coming from a trusted source. Uh, and some of those trusted sources, uh, we like to talk about ourselves as a trusted source. Our local media outlets are, are very much trusted sources and are committed to sharing a, a safe information, national media outlets. And again, reliable apps are out there. Uh, so again, be careful, be aware of, of what's out there on the information, be careful what you share and what you click on. So we talked a little bit about preparing ahead of the storm. Let's talk about how we stay safe during, uh, before, during, and after the storm. Uh, in your home, hopefully you've done a few of these things. We had a little bit of a, an early winter, uh, taste of winter in November. Uh, this quiet weather over the last 30 days has, has provided plenty of opportunity. Uh, to do some of these things. So ahead of a winter storm, what do you want to do? Well, make sure that uh, uh, if it's a significant winter storm and we're talking about uh, conditions that could cause severe impact and maybe you have trouble traveling, uh, getting to your destinations, make sure you're checking medications, make sure you have enough, uh, make sure you have your uh, food supplies uh, stocked up in case travel is limited. Now, this isn't every winter a weather event. A lot of our events we can uh, recover from fairly quickly. Uh, when we get into the heart of winter, when we've had lots of snowfall, and this has happened in the past winters uh, in this portion of the country, make sure things like your furnace vents are cleared, uh, not obstructed by snow. Uh, why do we recommend this? Well, in the case of deep snowpack, when you start to have drifting snow or snow uh, uh, blocking your vents, this can cause uh, concern for carbon monoxide poisoning. Check your snow, sh your snow shovels, your snow blowers, make sure everything is 
tuned up and working prior to the snow falling. Uh, you don't want to get into a winter storm and then uh, need to rely on somebody else to help dig you out. Last thing, make sure your family is prepared. Um, change plans if you need to. If you see winter weather in the forecast, the forecast becomes more severe, take the time, make sure everyone in your household knows what they need to do. Make sure that if you have tra travel plans or things you, you need to do, maybe you need to consider rescheduling. And finally, we've collected a list of a few things here on the right uh, side of your screen to collect before a winter storm arrives. Just make sure you have them available. Shovel, uh, make sure you have salt in case you need to de-ice sidewalks, driveways. Flashlights, batteries, very important if the power is lost. Uh, candles, we've already talked about the food and the water. Uh, blankets and warm clothing, prescription medicines. One thing a lot of people don't consider, uh, making sure you have uh, uh, charged cell phones, making sure you have maybe a battery pack, uh, whether it stays in your home or whether it travels in the car with you. Uh, things that uh, can really come in handy if you lose power. In your vehicle, what do you wanna do? Number one thing, make sure you have an emergency safety kit in your vehicle. These things include things like you see listed here, jumper cables, flashlights, blankets, um, ice scraper. You'd be surprised at how many people may not have an ice scraper or a snow brush uh, in their vehicle ahead of the winter. Uh, water and snacks, first aid kit, very important if you end up getting stranded. Some of the things you may wanna check before snow falls, uh, check your uh, check your windshield wiper fluids. Check uh, your windshield wiper blades. Make sure everything is working correctly. Don't wait until the last second to, to try to run to the store and then stock up. Make sure you have that shovel or scraper in your vehicle if snow's in the forecast. And again, if you're traveling, we always recommend you to, to stay aware of the forecast. Know what's coming, not only from the destination you're in, but in the place you wanna go. Talking about work and school, uh, pretty simple here. Uh, if your employer has a policy for winter weather, make sure you know it. Same thing with your school. Make sure, know, make sure you know where you're gonna find out your information, whether it's a cancellation, delay, or, or so on and so forth. So now that the storm has arrived, how do we wanna make sure we travel safely? Well, the number one thing here, it's not common sense. Well, it probably is common sense. Let's drive to the conditions. Make sure that you're out there um, and you understand how slippery the roads are and you know how your vehicle works in the snow. Number two, slow down. Uh, we see a lot of folks uh, driving way too fast in the winter conditions and this can uh, rapidly increase your risk of accidents. Maintain plenty of space. Uh, when you're following somebody in traffic, uh, you'll see why in just a little brief second. And if you can't see, if the conditions become so significantly deteriorated, that it's a whiteout, try to pull over, find a safe spot, get off the road, somewhere safe, make sure you put your hazards on um, and wait until conditions improve if you can. Lastly, one of the things not a lot of people think about, if you're traveling any distance, um, always let others know where you're headed to. Always let somebody know the roads that you're gonna take on those trips. Um, this can, if you end up getting stranded or end up getting caught in a worse situation, this can really help out if people need to try to find you. We talked about stopping distance and why you wanna maintain distance. Um, here's a good example of stopping distances in any type of weather and especially winter weather. They can increase in upwards of 10 times um, in winter weather driving conditions. So that driving distance, that stopping distance in a dry road, um, going in this example, 35 miles an hour, um, 10 times as much when you're talking about icy conditions. Always leave plenty of time to think about braking and then think about thinking about braking because it does take time to react to winter weather and slippery road conditions. And lastly, when we talk about being prepared and traveling in the winter weather, uh, this was a research piece of research done out of uh, uh, the National Weather Service in Milwaukee in conjunction with the Wisconsin DOT they took a look at uh, accident totals and uh, put them in relation to snowfall amounts. And it's pretty clear to see based on their research that the highest accident totals typically take place when we have the lowest snowfall amounts. Anywhere from a trace to two inches of snow uh, led to a significant increase in accidents uh, on, on the roads in their areas. Uh, perhaps this is a few reasons. I think uh, a lot of times in the when light snow takes place, we kind of take it for granted. Maybe we don't uh, exercise some of those common sense skills, such as uh, 
uh, increasing your following distance and slowing down. So one of those things to think about, light snow is definitely a significant uh, concern uh, for accidents. So if you're on the road and you get stuck, what are some things you should do? Well, number one, call for help. Uh, make sure uh, most everyone has a cell phone with them nowadays. Call for help, but be careful to conserve battery energy. Uh, hopefully, one of the things we'd recommend having in your vehicle is a charger. Uh, but if you're stuck in the road and, and it takes you a while, conserve your battery energy or your phone battery as much as you can. Uh, stay in your vehicle. Um, one of those things, especially when the consider when conditions deteriorate quickly, stay in your vehicle. Try to run and start your vehicle every 10 minutes if you're stuck, just to keep the heat up in your vehicle. Uh, but the one thing doing that we want you to be careful with uh, is while your vehicle is running, crack your windows every so often, especially if you're in deep snow cover and strong winds. Uh, it can uh, it can be common uh, that snow could drift up to your exhaust. You don't want to have your vehicle exhaust uh, covered or buried in snow because this can uh, also enhance the potential for carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, be visible. How do you be visible to rescuers if you need to be rescued? Uh, if it's at night, turn on your dome light uh, while running your vehicle. You want to obviously conserve battery and conserve gas as much as you can, uh, but this is one of the ways you can help at least increase your visibility potential. We recommend folks have uh, uh, some sort of bright piece of clothing, maybe something reflective that you could maybe tie on to a mirror or tie on to um, an antenna or something that could be uh, more visibly seen if someone is on the road looking for you. Uh, and again, after the snow stops and if the visibility is improved and you're still stuck, uh, one of the things uh, you can do is to open your vehicle hood to signal that you need help, that you might be there and that you might actually be in the vehicle. If I'm stranded outside, uh, this is a, a little bit more trickier situation. Number one thing is try to find shelter. Uh, you want to minimize or, or reduce your exposure as much as you can. If you can't find shelter, there's no buildings or anything available nearby, uh, find any protection, whether that's trees or anything that you can make some shelter to protect yourself from the wind and the elements. Uh, if you're able to and you have the resources available, uh, start a fire, uh, melt snow for water, uh, you want to be very careful about eating snow directly or using snow directly for uh, for your water because it can lower your body temperature. The last thing, try to increase your movement. If you're stuck somewhere uh, outdoors, try to move. Try uh, a simple exercise to keep the blood flow working, not only in your hands, uh, but also in your leg and your feet to try to keep, uh, keep warm and keep uh, circulation going. So if you're at home uh, and the power goes out, what should you do? Well, probably the most uh, the most common sense thing would be to stay inside as much as you can. Try to conserve the heat in your, your house. Simple ways you can do that, close off the uh, unneeded rooms in your house, shut the doors to those rooms and, and close some of the vents if you have a, a, a something, uh, something still heating your place. Uh, close blinds or curtains to, to reduce some of the drafts and the cold air coming through your windows. Uh, eat and drink is, is actually still important because you want to keep up energy, uh, which can also help increase uh, body temperature and core body temperature. Use your electronic devices sparingly. Um, if you're out of power and you don't have a battery pack, uh, your cell phone can die fairly quickly. Don't uh, spend your whole time watching videos or playing games. Uh, wear layers of clothing. This is something that the power goes out in an extreme cold or blizzard situation. Uh, just like you would be doing if you were going outside, wear layers. Uh, this can help, uh, again, keep that core body temperature uh, higher than normal. So after the storm, uh, some simple things here. Uh, if you need to travel, if you uh, need to go out, uh, make sure you monitor road conditions. Make sure you uh, allow time for those roads to be clean because it isn't an instant process and it can take a time for the, the road crews to get out there. Give plenty of space to, to, uh, to the plows that are out on the roads. Uh, make sure uh, you can see them and make sure they can see you when you're out there. Uh, when it comes to clearing off your own space, your driveways, your sidewalks, uh, some simple shoveling tips, uh, make sure you try to push the snow. Don't lift the snow, especially, especially if it's very wet and a very heavy snow. Uh, wear good boots. Uh, if you're spending time outdoors, 
especially when the temperatures may be dropping after a winter storm moves through. Uh, some of the first things that uh, you can see frostbite on uh, in the winter are your toes, toes and fingertips. Good boots and good gloves are very important. Take breaks. Don't think you have to clean your driveway all at once. Uh, uh, or take turns with someone maybe in your house that uh, uh, can also help out. Stay hydrated uh, and stay warm and dry as best as you can. Uh, again, we're kind of going back to the common sense here. Uh, dress for the weather conditions you're going out into, uh, no matter if you're traveling or no matter if you're cleaning your, your sidewalks or your driveways. A couple quick resources here. Uh, if you need to travel, 511 will get you to resources to check on road conditions in your area as well as Safe Travel USA. You can go on a web page or on your phone to uh, check uh, road conditions in your area. Again, we've talked about this a little bit, but be wary of cold exposure. Uh, frostbite is a pretty common injury uh, when we're talking about winter weather, both uh, during and after uh, snowstorms move through. Some signs of frostbite, um, you start to feel, uh, uh, your fingers may feel a little numb, a little tingly at times. Um, the skin color on your fingertips could be begin to change, maybe, maybe a little bit more whitish uh, or grayish uh, or yellow skins. Uh, one thing you want to do, uh, limit your time as much as possible. Uh, if it's a wind chill advisory, just remember that frostbite can take place uh, 30 minutes or less. Uh, in a wind chill warning, you're talking about 10 minutes or less. Uh, and what this can do if you're out there, it can lead to hypothermia. Uh, and this is what we consider an abnormally low body temperature. And when you're at the hypothermia stage, this is extremely critical. Uh, confusion, shivering, you might have difficulty speaking or putting your thoughts together. Uh, muscles may become a little bit more difficult. Um, and you could also feel very tired. Something to definitely be aware of. And if you're experiencing any signs of, of hypothermia, uh, it's important to call 911 right away, get medical attention, uh, as soon as you can. So we've had the winter storm, we've prepared, we're, we're a little bit more aware, we're prepared for what to do before, during, and after. Let's talk a little bit about well, how do you measure snow? What are we looking for? Well, it's, it's pretty simple. You don't actually need a whole lot to measure snow. Um, we have a couple examples here in the image. Uh, the, the best way is to find something, an area of ground that's flat or a surface that's flat. You can go out and throw a, a snowboard, which can be a piece of plywood, or uh, we'd prefer, say, a white painted piece of plywood because that does reduce the potential for any melting on a surface uh, of snow that uh, that that snow does fall on. Uh, we want you to try to put these things in in uh, open areas, unsheltered at least, uh, away from buildings, away from places where the snow may drift significantly. Uh, you can measure snow with a, a ruler or a yardstick. It doesn't have to be any precise, uh, specific thing that you need to do. Um, the one thing we do say when we, we tell folks to measure snow, make sure you uh, keep the stick, uh, snow stick uh, vertical. Don't try to, to measure at an angle because you can often um, create a, uh, either a, or too high of a snowfall amount or too low of a snowfall amount. Uh, and when you're taking a snowfall amount, try to gather a few different areas to do it. And then when you gather those locations, take an average, add them up, divide them by the amount of measurements you took, and that's your snowfall total. So where should I measure? Talked about this a little bit. Try to stay away from buildings. Try to, uh, try to ideally uh, get as far as uh, maybe uh, twice as far as the, ob the obstruction's height. So if you have a tree nearby and you know the tree is 20 feet tall, Try to find a spot 40 feet tall away from that to measure. Uh, same thing with your house. Don't uh, try to measure right uh, on your doorstep. You're probably not going to get the most accurate reading there. Um, avoid drifts as much as possible. If you know you're in an area uh, where there's drifting, uh, try to avoid those areas. Uh, if you have to measure snow when it's drifted, again, this is where it's, it's important to take multiple measurements. You're not going to have 100% precise snowfall measurement. Uh, when the when the wind is howling and when the wind, wind is drifting, uh, we like you to just to try to do the best that you can at estimating it. A couple frequently uh, asked questions we often get when it comes to snow measuring. Uh, can I just measure from my deck on the back of my house? Well, sure. Uh, in a lot of cases, when you have light winds, when you don't have a lot of wind, when the snow can just fall 
directly straight down onto a surface, you can measure uh, from, from the deck or from porch area. Uh, but we do caution that if the wind's picking up or if you have snow blowing off your roof onto your, your deck, uh, that can actually artificially enhance the snowfall amounts in your area. Uh, the one thing uh, we do run into a lot of it, a lot of times with snow is measuring on the grass. Uh, we like to try to avoid measuring on the grass a little bit because a lot of the, a lot of times your grass is still two inches or maybe even three inches tall in the winter time. It hasn't quite compacted down to to the bare ground. So when you put your your snow stick or your ruler down into the grass, you may actually be kind of artificially uh, measuring uh, too high fall too high of your snowfall amounts. Can you measure on concrete or blacktop? Again, this is one of those kind of gray areas. When the temperature is really cold and the surfaces have cold, cooled down and, and are quite cold, uh, you can. You can uh, usually get an accurate measurement there. The problem is, is when you have a lot of sun before and maybe the blacktop is above freezing, maybe you lose some of that first snowfall that fell because it's melted because of the, the surface, the warmer surface. Uh, this can actually lead to some lower snowfall totals. Uh, the last question we have, uh, will I always measure in the same location? Well, if you have an established area that you know is fairly reliable, uh, we, you know that the snowfall amounts are, are usually pretty accurate there, yeah, go ahead and measure there. That's kind of your designated area. Um, however, when you're talking about drifting, uh, drifting causes a lot of issues. Um, you may have to use you may have to move around. You may have to find something that you feel is more representative of, of the snowfall amounts in your area. Again, we always say use your best judgment when measuring the snow. Ice isn't uh, much different to measure. Uh, we have a couple different types of ice that we often get. We have what's called flat ice accumulations. These are basically, it is what it is. Flat ice accumulates on a flat surface. So like a, uh, the railing of your deck, um, a garbage can lid, those types of things. All you do to measure flat ice, um, same thing as you would with snow. Try to uh, use your ruler, uh, tape measure uh, to the nearest tenth of an inch if possible, uh, and then repeat that ice measurement on various surfaces. Uh, again, always try to read it at eye level so uh, your eyes don't play any tricks with you and you can actually uh, get a more accurate measurement of the ice. We talk about another type of ice, uh, which is called uh, radial ice accumulations. These are the accumulations you see on uh, trees or power lines or um, any sort of surface that may be uh, more of a round nature. There's a little bit of a trick to measure radial ice. Um, you'll wanna find your surface and then you're gonna actually take two measurements. You're gonna take your uh, ruler or a tape measure, whatever you're using to measure the ice on the top of uh, the, the uh, thing you're measuring and also at the bottom of the measurement. And then you're gonna take that uh, those two measurements add them together and then divide by two and that'll give you the, the average. Because what happens a lot of times uh, on a round surface is as freezing rain falls onto a, a, a surface, it will actually uh, accumulate more as it freezes on the bottom of, of, of a say a tree branch or, or a piece of uh, metal or a wire or anything like those things. So you're actually your highest icing accumulation will be on uh, the bottom of, of the thing you're measuring. So I talked a little bit about how to measure snow and where to measure snow and ice. Let's talk about some ways you can help us uh, because we definitely in the wintertime, we need as much help as we can get measuring. Uh, if you have chance, uh, go ahead and download an app on your phone called the MPing app. Um, this is a, a very useful tool that helps us, helps us track what type of precipitation is falling in your area. You can uh, open up that app and uh, tell it to uh, record your exact location and then you can choose whether it's rain, snow, mixed precip, and then uh, simply just uh, submit it. Uh, what this does is it pops up in our uh, databases here uh, in the weather service, and we can get a little bit better picture uh, of whether it's snowing or, or freezing rain or sleet in your location. And it helps us really uh, tune the forecast uh, to what's happening in real time. How do you report to us directly? Well, there's a couple different ways. Uh, you can report every day, and this is a very uh, a good program uh, called the Coco Raz uh, program. Um, if you go to the, the website, you can get a little bit more information, but this is a page where you can sign up uh, and submit daily 
uh, our everyday weather reports, whether it be uh, temperatures, whether it be snowfall, uh, rainfall, or any of those things. There's there's uh, a lot of very useful instructions on in how to sign up for this program uh, and how to uh, to use that program. On any given day, uh, we'll see thousands uh, and even tens of thousands of reports come in through the Coco Raz program into our system, both during and, and after a winter weather uh, event moves through. Uh, when we talk about one-time reports, say you don't want to do the everyday thing, um, you can submit these to us a few ways. We'll talk about the next one, which is an online storm report form that'll go directly to the Weather Service, but you can also email us. You can uh, send it to our email, nws.suefalls at nova.gov. Social media. Um, we like to use the power of social media as much as we can to, to gather reports and learn what's happening in, in your area when winter weather moves through really encourage you to uh, to follow our social media pages. Um, we do have a public phone number that's available if you have any inquiries, uh, though we would probably prefer to, to use the avenues of social media and or the uh, online storm report form since that does get ingested or we can ingest those things directly into our computer systems um, and send those out to our partners who are also looking for that information. Speaking of that online precipitation reporting form, uh, real simple, you can get to that by going to our webpage right above the map where you'll uh, you'll see the uh, forecast and the watch warning and advisories. There'll be a little drop down under current hazards that says submit a report. When you click on, click on this link, it'll give you an interactive uh, observation form that you can fill out. You can choose it, whether it's snowfall, you can choose the amount, add some more details, when it took place, uh, and it'll also allow you to pinpoint uh, your location, whether you're on a web browser or whether you're uh, accessing that from uh, from your mobile phone. Once you submit that to us, it pops up into our computer system. We can send out a report uh, that goes out to our members of the media uh, and our partners out there that are working on communicating this information. Really recommend this uh, as a tool to kind of get familiar with and get used to uh, because it's certainly information that we find uh, very useful. As we're kind of nearing the end here, I uh, wanted to point you uh, to a few resources that we've made up here today. We know we've talked about a lot going from um, what all this stuff means, watches, warnings, and advisories, to what we typically get in this area, uh, how to measure snow, where to report the snow. So we thought we'd create a, a very nice set of handouts that you can print off uh, and take with you. Again, go to our, our website, uh, www.weather.gov slash FSD, or you could put in uh, Sioux Falls instead of FSD. At the top of that page, there's a link to our winter weather awareness class pages. And from there, you can uh, download these images to save, print off, share with anybody else that uh, you, may, uh, uh, you may want to share uh, this information with. Uh, and then uh, again, you know, go forth and, and uh, uh, stay safe during this upcoming winter season using it. That is pretty much all we have here um, for today. Hopefully this provided some useful information for you. We're gonna try to record this, or we did record this, and it'll be posted up on our website. If uh, you have anybody who would like to view this uh, talk, feel free to, uh, sh to share that. Check again at that uh, uh, winter weather awareness class page at the top of our website. We'll have that uh, here briefly. If you have any questions, any concerns, um, I have my contact information there as well. I also uh, put in the contact information of our warning coordination meteorologist, Peter Rogers. He's uh, one of the folks you'll also see out there during the springtime uh, presenting the severe weather awareness talks uh, during the seasons ahead. And again, uh, a couple information, a couple pieces of information uh, you may wanna add to your phone or check out on your, your phone. Uh, first of all, uh, a general inquiry number. Uh, you can reach us here at our office. Uh, the one big thing I'd like to, to point out is our forecast uh, phone line. Uh, you can see it there. This is a, a number you can call to get the uh, current forecast, also the current conditions, and also during the winter time when it's, uh, when it's snowing or when we have precipitation. We'll throw in the uh, snowfall amounts, what we've seen at the Weather Service office here at the airport, uh, and we update that uh, every hour to uh, give the current snowfall uh, what what has fallen across the area during the events. Again, point you to our social media feeds and our website. I would really uh, I encourage you to check those things out. 
that is all I have here for today. We're uh, we're thankful for you watching. Uh, we're hoping this served as, as a very good resource. We're also hoping that uh, uh, this will be a springboard for us so that, uh, again, look forward to our social media feeds. You'll likely see more kind of talks like this uh, moving forward, talking on some of the shorter and more simple uh, uh, topics uh, with winter weather preparedness and, and uh, uh, things you can do during the season ahead. So again, I wanna thank you. Um, I do not see any questions. If there's anyone that has any questions about what we've discussed, uh, we'll stay on here uh, for a few minutes to answer some of those. Uh, in the GoToWebinar interface, you can actually uh, type in a question um, or type in the chat if you have one. I will uh, turn off my webcam for just a second. If uh, Again, if you have any questions, we'll stay on for about five minutes and, and we'll go ahead and answer them if they come in. All right, not seeing any questions. Uh, again, I wanted to thank you all for your time and, and hopefully you've uh, uh, gathered some very useful information out of this. Uh, thanks for attending and uh, uh, stay safe uh, during this winter season and have a, a very uh, uh, happy holidays. Thank you very much for watching.